Does everybody remember Todd from the cotton picking and the cotton gin? Well, guess what? That field Todd was picking in, they are now planting corn for that uh, neighbor doing some custom work. Here's his bed, bed maker. Throwing down some super cheap fertilizer, building the bed up. And there he is in the planter. And he said, because you guys had such great questions and commenting, we get to ride with him. We're making hay. Well, the soil, Todd just told me the soil is a little too damp. We don't think we're gonna do any planting me again <laughs> so yeah well, so we're planting corn here in the same field that we did that video in which is kind of cool so we're using actually our cotton planter to plant this corn and the only reason we're doing that is just because we're all set up on the tractor wise on 38 so we're gonna keep it that way and um, we got a uh, an integral a max emerge planter here but we've built this special uh, sled on it this piece right here, it bolts onto this frame and it's got, we call them boats, but um, it makes these furrows here. It's making this, this smooth here with the ridge. And we try to, we figured out we can irrigate with less water here using a shorter, shallower bed. We don't need to make a giant deep furrow like that. How deep did they used to be, I guess, for people's comparison? They used to be like three to four inches. But now we're like two and a half inches. So that, that allows that water to sub a whole lot faster past the seed line right here. So, but there's enough moisture right now that this corn, it's gonna start start sprouting down in there. So if we dig down in there, you can see, here's a good example of all that organic matter. This is the cotton root. And let's see if I can find some seed in here. There's one right there. So that little guy there, it should be, we should be planted about an inch and three quarters. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, nothing shallower than an inch and a half and nothing really deeper than two inches. So, but that's that's probably enough moisture there for it's, it's basically gonna start his journey to a, a kernel here in the next 120 days worth, so. What track are you guys using? Uh, just a 6145. We don't need very much horsepower to pull this. We're only doing six rows at a time, and um, you can kind of see the design on it there. All those little points there are where the, it's kind of making a little cutout so it pushes the dirt into this kind of a throat right here, and that's what makes that so smooth. I'm not really satisfied right now with the way it's turning out. It's a little bit too wet for us. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow this other machine to go ahead of us tonight and just allow it to aerate and air this stuff out. We kind of want it to be a little more on the drier side like this, because it, it crumbles a little bit better versus this, this stickier stuff here. It kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of impedes it. It doesn't want to slide across that very well. So we want to make it as consistent as possible. Make it happy for this corn. On, on this machine here, we have a uh, rigged up six rows. It's the same as, um, is my sled planter. Um, they make them in a whole lot bigger than this, but we just don't do it as big. This is the Orthman strip tiller. And the concept of it is, is that we're stripping just a little bit of an area. So if we look at our tractor here, we're not really sinking in the ground here because we haven't busted that crest off yet. But we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to, we want to till this, this hole here real soft. See how this is kind of hard? And this is super soft and we're really tilling this thing down i don't know I and mean, we can dig down in here and see we're really going down you know you can dig down pretty deep get down there. yeah so that's that's what we want that corn root really wants to kind of grow in this cone area here and that's what we're trying to give it its best environment we can we don't really care about this part here because that's what we call the wheel rows and this is our furrow so we want the we want this to where the corn is growing to grow down in this nice soft soil, 
and eventually down here if we dig down at an angle below this the deeper we go the less technically the less compact it's going to be but it kind of it's a cool concept it's made for kind of a no-till situations um, kind of drilling stuff into old crop residues wheat stuff like that takes but, a little uh, bit bigger tractor I noticed too this takes a whole lot more tractor yeah um, this one pulls it really easy I've got a 12 row system just like this it's a folding one and um, oh, it's on the tractor right now isn't it it's on the Track. tractor I yeah we, we can go there and take a picture of it but um, it does a really good job when we got a 12 row planter that we follow that with and it does a really good job we, we really enjoyed it so but yeah that's I don't even I don't own any of this stuff <laughs> Todd well, it's fun. We only do hay, that's it. It's a lot of maintenance, but on this one here, we're, we're kind of unique because we're putting on two different types of fertilizers. We've got, we've got this tank. This tank up here is our, as our, um, our main source of fertilizer. And our other one over there is our secondary source. And if you look at on the shank here, we have these, these tubes that come down. And of course they came from each source of the tanks there. But like we're trying to inject we've got one that placed up real high up here and this is really for the the seedling so when it's when it sprouts it's going to get right into this stuff right here and it's going to give it a little bit of gatorade for its uh first couple days of life and then as it grows up we don't want to put this other stuff too close to the seedling because it's it's full of salts okay and um what we're mainly putting down is is phosphorus now phosphorus doesn't move in the soil so wherever we place it it's not going to leach down it's going to stay put there i didn't know that yeah so it'll uh, it'll stay put we're not going to we're going we're not going to lose it it's not going to evaporate out it's not going to disappear and so the concept is is when the when the plant root grows down into that and say you placed it here it's going to the easiest way is for it to to find it and once it finds it it knows where that source is at so looks like these got hot and melted no like this you, is the design. Oh. Yep. So, so stupid. So what we're going to do, what the concept of it is, is if we get into some harder ground, these pizza slices, we call them, they just make a little slice in the ground. And then these don't really function much for us because they're mainly, mainly made for trash. Or oh, to cut or, through the cotton debris and it kind of like, trash, yeah. it kind of like folds it out. But we're just, we're barely skimming the top of this just to brush away any debris that's there. And then this is your main work workforce right here this big shank right here and that's fracturing that soil and just enough and it makes a little bit of a trench right here and to close that trench if we didn't have these wheels here it would just be an open trench and all this fertilizer would be exposed so what we want to do is we want to those waves just throw it in if you look at the back of it here they're actually curved just a little bit oh yeah like that and so what it do what it's doing is fracturing not fracturing but it's it's closing that that shank hole up <laughs> you said shank hole yeah. <laughs> last time you said master beater now you said shank hole i got all the cool words come on <laughs> but uh sorry parents so yeah so that that's the concept of it you know this it works really well the corn is really sensitive to compaction and so we're trying to, to loosen that yeah loosen up the soil as much as we can without recompacting it to close that hole so that's the, whole, the whole concept you're not fresh you're not you're not putting any pressure from the top you're you're kind of fraction from the side and that doesn't really i got gotcha. you create any um compaction on it so but got a little bit of spring pressure here this just busting up the clods as it comes across so you've done a lot more research compared to myself on uh, equipment across the country, stuff like this. This is used all over the U.S., isn't oh, it? This is used mainly in the the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. So is it rare? Is it unique that being over here, or is this do other guys? It, I think I've seen O and E pull something similar, right? Yeah, it's no? been well. Uh, the last, I would say, in the last ten years ago, you didn't see these things. Okay. But now you you see them. We we kind of got involved with a little bit of this, and then we bought a machine, and then. In, Everybody else saw it and they've just loved them. Yeah, so we we kind of showed the you said you've got a twelve row too. Yeah, we kind of showed the 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 concept of it of it actually could work, and once we proved it by producing corn at at that year we produced it. I think it made like thirty six tons of corn silage, wet tons. So that did really well. So that 
that was on par with any conventional corn that we grew. So it was kind of simple. We just stripped it, planted it, and we left it alone. We didn't cultivate it. We didn't do anything else. It what kept, was that behind the first time? It was behind wheat. It was behind wheat? Yep. Mm, so we'll cut the wheat off, and then we come in with this machine and strip it, then we plant it, and then we kind of leave it alone. Yeah. So simple as possible. Todd's brother Dean is here. Can you guys tell they're brothers? They look nothing alike. <laughs> All right, Dean's gonna run this one. We're gonna run up with Dean and Claire. Blanco. <laughs> look at the dog. The dog's sleeping on the tractor floor. This takes, from what they're telling me out there, because you're running two different chemicals into here, this there's a lot to watch, correct? Along you know, with the GPS? We're putting in like down at eight inches or somewhere down there. Putting in a uh, fertilizer 7147 run about 30 gallons an acre and then the the small tank we're running a like a pop-up fertilizer we're replacing it right where the seed's going to go and that's we're only putting five gallons an acre on with that and normally we put it on with the planter but the tank fell off the tractor <laughs> so we're going to go this route hey your jeans have holes in them how much do you pay for these jeans zero i don't i don't like holes in my pants <laughs> you did but you this but happened today people pay for that in their jeans oh i know you didn't pay for that i, I, I worked those in there that's so weird <laughs> so weird that he actually worked for holes in his pants yeah. hey hi yes why do you why do you even clean this so then we can show people how we plant corn in arizona not like but well, not in arizona. i guess just like other people just like other people like the rest of the corn Would you belt. say we're in the Stone Age using two pieces of equipment to yeah. do what other people do with one? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Todd says. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a good way to get your get it right where we need to put it. Helps if I turn the phone. Because they're not going to plant anymore tonight because of like this brother said earlier too much moisture in the ground right now they want to let it sit a day yeah. you guys gonna try to desk it or no did you decide i would like to try it but I, I don't know. that's tomorrow floof it up a little I bit might, i'm gonna probably come after dinner and come back and get maybe one more tank put out that way it's dry enough to for the planter at least get started in the morning before i get there you you work after dark oh yeah that's so weird <laughs> so weird you do should I, see this. Do I want to? Not really. You but. should see this email I got yesterday. I might I might send it to you. This guy was just chewing me out about how we're profiteering, selling hay at the prices we're at, and oh, yeah. la di da di. I don't know. I, his first email. But well, he said he was gonna he was gonna complain to the AG. I said, great, do it. I, go ahead. Go. I. What are you gonna say? I guess I could go gear up one more. I'm running six mile an hour. You go pretty quick with this. Then. Yeah, so right on this screen here, I've got, um, no, let me swap it over to here. So I got my uh, PR1 is the product rate one, which is my small tank. Shows my target, which is five gallons the acre, and it's what it's actually putting out. Uh, pressure, speed we're running, and then that's how many acres we're doing an hour. 12. 12.13 12, 13. yeah and so and then my product rate two which is uh, the 30 gallons is my target um, the control valve is probably a little slow to catch up right now either that or I can bump up the hydraulics and see if the pressure will come up any but it's uh, it's showing 50 50 pounds of pressure should only be putting about 35 pounds of pressure the idea with this is that Com corn is really sensitive to, to uh, compaction so if we can I guess make it less compacted where the roots are going to go the better off your stand <laughs> higher the yield hopefully but and we get a chance to put that fertilizer right right where we need it right where the roots are gonna right where they're gonna go is yeah where the roots are gonna go Back there on the tank, you'll see the little the little ball machine we see we call it. Oh yeah. They're just a John Blue row indicator. So the the higher the flow, the ball goes up higher. 
and that's the color of the, of the fertilizer. The one on the left side is the darker. You can't really see the balls in there because they're all the way at the top of how much we're flowing through there. And with the, this the one on the right side, that's the one we're putting out on five gallons the acre. So the balls are down at the bottom. Down at the, yeah, good that they're low. And it's, it's like a greenish color um, material, so you can actually see that. I need to get a different, they have different colored balls to put in there for the densities and I just, I need to find the right one to put in there. So does that start and stop or just stop? Yeah, start and stop. And also like if I kick it on and we're not moving, it won't let the product come out. Really? And uh, yeah, this system that's, is advanced. That's part of the kind of the rate control safety, safety deal. But if I want to kick it on, I have to kick, hit the quick start. Like if I want to prime it while we're sitting there. It's green. This tractor's pretty cool. Like I can set a speed and I set it on like number two right now, which is six mile an hour. And it'll idle down and gear up whatever you want to, so you match your speed. So you burn a lot less fuel. How do you like that? Uh, what's it, the, the track one called? Yeah. Oh, the RX tractor. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys like that? Uh, so far so good. I'm, uh, I guess tell, explain to a lot of people the, the, the tractor you're placed with it and why. Well, we were pulling that 12 row uh, Orthman strip tiller and uh, with an 8370R. And what was the articulating and, one you had? Well, oh, the big tractor was a uh, 510 horse eight wheeler. Because you traded in for that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, so the track tractor would kind of do What's the quad track? I guess the uh, the RX track. It'll do about the same what we want to do with that big tractor. Now that the big tractor, it's just getting so hard to get around any around here anymore with all the traffic. That's what that's what I want to get at. People don't understand the traffic we deal with in the roads and stop signs yeah. and stop lights. Seems like suicide hours, like from seven to eight and three to five. Oh, it's terrible. It's just. You guys are liking the results so far? Um, yeah, it, it uh, we put it on that, um, all the uh, Wilcox Eliminator, and it, it pulled just good. Really? Okay, we're running out of running out of products. So we're climbing out. Do you need a hand? Or are you good? I'm doing it. You're doing it. Yep. Okay, we're gonna film you doing it. You did it. Could you, hey, do you need a hand? Yeah. Oh, he's got it too. Come on, B-Man. He's got to, you got to watch his paws because they'll get, they'll get stuck in Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. So he does it. We were just talking about this. Doesn't really like all the trash. Wished it, kicked it out further away, I guess. Left, look at, see this is what. Look at these ones. Those look like Yeah, so these come along carrots. in a shank and they pile up on the shank and then they plow out the row. Yeah. Oh. These ones have this one. <laughs> Then he plows out the row. What you looking for, Blanco? Get it. So what are you feeling while you're stepping in here? Just a compaction? You can feel how soft it is now. Compared to the. We build a bed on top of that. And then there's, I mean, it's just nice soft for the roots, roots. to grow fast down. Something's growing there. I don't know what he thinks is down there. Probably a lot. He, he might smell the uh, fertilizer that's down in there. Yeah, because he's doing it right down the middle. Right down there. Probably thinks there's a gopher hole there. All right, we're going to try to get back with these guys tomorrow. I've got, I'm hoping I don't have to run up north. He's got some errands to do. Take Claire to school. Take her to school. Pick her up. School. Pick her up. Where's mom? Uh, she's working. Oh, she's working at the other school. Oh, <laughs> well, anyway, so I've got, I don't know. We're going to try to get back out here and get some, some more great videos, move the camera around, get a drone up, but uh, awesome. Dean, thank you very much. All right. See, see you later. Thanks and a lot. We'll see you. Have a, and I'll say you have a great day. You have a great day. That was sweet. See you guys.